And the game award for best ongoing game goes to Fortnite. Do the Fortnite. Do the dance. We like Fortnite. We like Fortnite. We like Fortnite. Hey, what's up everyone? Merry Christmas. My name is Edmund. Welcome to another vlog. Yeah, I'm standing here and not in my room because my room's actually a mess right now. And then it's Christmas, so I figured, hey, like, let me stand in front of the Christmas tree. I just wanted to say a few short words before getting into this one since uh, there was a lot of new things for me when I was working on this. This is actually the first time that I fully recorded a vlog on my phone and while I think the uh, image quality itself is a little bit better than the camera I used before, the stabilization isn't quite as good. I think sometimes I cover the mic so there's some bits where the audio may be off, especially in the beginning and the end when I'm uh, talking to the camera. The previous vlogs, the Camp Flognaw vlogs, some of the other videos were recorded on a Sony Cybershot. Um, that's a camera that I'm borrowing from Thunder, so I don't have it at the moment. Hopefully that doesn't take away from your guys' enjoyment. This video is coming out a little bit late. I mean, I have my like full-time job. I have like other obligations that I have to meet. I just edit when I can after work. Anyways, this one took a little bit longer even because as I got to editing this video, I started getting more ideas and I started to experiment more. And obviously I'm just getting started, so some of the ideas that I wanted to implement, I wasn't totally sure how to do, so I'm, I'm figuring out the editing software as I go. It's done now and it's out. I figured at this point I'd wait till today, take this as my little Christmas gift to you guys. Once again, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you guys may celebrate. Uh, I think it's just the most important to spend it with your loved ones and just show them you appreciate them. So have a wonderful day, guys. Enjoy the video. Okay, so real quickly, um, at the LA Live, I'm in downtown LA basically. Um, I'm about to head into the Microsoft Theater. I'm here for the Game Awards tonight, actually. I just gotta go get some food real quick because I'm starving. I actually missed breakfast today. Oops. I don't know how much is allowed to record and whatnot, but <laughs> when Sora gets announced, you bet I'm gonna be recording my reaction. So I'll catch you guys in there and. So I was actually really excited to get right into the Game Awards, however, what led up to it was this 30 minute long pre-show. It was not very different than the Game Awards itself, honestly. They revealed a couple of trailers and announced a few awards. Nothing too out of the ordinary except maybe the Final Fantasy VII trailer was kind of cool. What really got me to jump out of my seat though was this Ghibli-esque animation trailer. It was leading me to believe that it was a new IP. However, it turns out to be the No More Heroes 3 trailer. I nearly jumped out of my chair, man. For a second thought, maybe, just maybe we'll get Travis touchdown for Smash. Twenty twenty. Okay, so honestly, this had to be the best part of the pre-show. The award for best fighting game. Let's go. Super Smash Bros. Yeah! Let's, go. Let's go. Well, the FGC is just gonna have to hold Congrats. that one, don't they? Thank you, uh, Game Awards, and thank you everyone out there, uh, very, very much. You know, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is really more than just a fighting game. And the fact that all of this comes together so seamlessly and so beautifully is really a testament to the dedication, to the hard work, and to the skill of Mr. Sakurai and the development team. This award is for them. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, let's go, Dougie B. Okay, so I actually thought this was really cool. Churches came onto the stage to kick off the main portion of the Game Awards. The song they performed was actually called Death Stranding, which was inspired by the game of the same name. 
Death Stranding was also nominated for Game of the Year later that night, so not too hard to see the connection there. Makes sense why they were playing. I actually really liked this band, and I'd never gotten to see them perform live, so I really enjoyed this. It is such an honor to be here. You guys ready to celebrate video games tonight? <laughs> so excited to have everyone here with us tonight to celebrate games. First of all, let's give it up again for churches and the Game Awards for the show. So I won't go into too much detail because you can go and watch the live stream for yourself if you want, but frankly, there just wasn't too much for me at this show. I will say this though, I did almost lose it when I saw the Nintendo Switch logo, followed by the Square Enix logo. Of course, it wasn't Sora for Smash, it ended up being Bravely Default 2, which honestly, I thought was already a thing, but I guess this is the third entry in the series. I haven't gotten around to playing those myself, but I hear it's one of the greatest RPGs out there. And so the show continued in a pattern of giving us a couple of brand new game trailers and then announcing a few more game awards. The best esports player of the year was notably presented by Stephen Curry. Something that I think was a cherry on top was that Ikumi Nakamura came onto the stage to present the award for best art direction. Hi, um, please bear bear with my English. <laughs> and if you're not already aware, she's the creative and art director for the Evil Within series. Ikumi really made a splash this year at E3 by being so incredibly charming during her presentation for her latest title, Ghostwire Tokyo. And although it was only recently that her bubbly personality really took the limelight, Ikumi is a veteran to the industry, having worked on titles such as Okami and Bayonetta. Now, you gotta give it to them, it was pretty clever how Cyberpunk 2077 got so much screen time at this event. They started off with a behind the scenes look of the soundtrack. This of course featured a lot of the artists who were making the music for the game. Grimes was also in house that night, so her performance followed immediately after the video. Yep, that's right, Norman Reedus. Not only is he famous for his role in the hit TV series, The Walking Dead, but he has also become somewhat of a gaming icon in recent years, especially since the announcement of PT, aka the playable teaser, which was supposed to be a collaboration between Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro. And as we already know, that project fell through. However, Hideo and Norman did collaborate on Death Stranding. Anywho, it was Devil May Cry 5 that won that one. Please welcome two of the most innovative visionaries in the history of gaming and just about everything else. From Muppet Labs, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker. <laughs> So I actually really enjoyed this special appearance. Not only am I a fan of the Muppets, but the announcement for their parody game was really clever. <laughs> the Untitled Beaker Game. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a great choice as presenters the of the Games for Impact, Impact Award. Recognizing socially conscious and progressive games in the industry. Uh -huh. 
All right. <clears throat> the award for Games for Impact goes to... <laughs> no, not geese. Greece! Greece! <laughs> He's one of the most watched streamers alive and the winner of last year's Game Award for Content Creator of the Year. Please welcome Ninja. Clown. And his fit sucks too. All right, now look, I wasn't even going to bring this up because I, I don't really care too much about Ninja. This award is sort of irrelevant to me, but like, man, come on, look at this suit. It is hot garbage. How much more cliche can you get? I mean, bro, you have money, you have cool hair, you're clashing, dog. Like, please. You should have just stuck to a regular single color suit, maybe a nice bow tie. You would have looked great, but you ended up looking like a mess. I mean, look, we get it. You're a gamer. You like shooters. You don't have to scream it to the world. Now, if you know me, you know I like music. So I wanted to show you guys this live performance from the orchestra accompanied by a cinematic from The Ghost of Tsushima. Orchestral music is beautiful in its own right, so I really liked how the Game Awards Orchestra was able to add that extra flair to a lot of the presentations. And this band has been on my list since the beginning. They've won five Grammys. They're members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They've sold over 85 million albums worldwide, and they've got their own video game announcement, as you're about to find out. Get on your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Green Day! Honestly, I love Green Day, but this music selection felt the most out of place to me, despite how excited Jeff Keighley may have been. Come on, man, this is gaming. It's supposed to be free. Free love. Come on, let's come on. Come on out. I dare you. So Churches had a song that was inspired by Death Stranding, Grimes had a song that would eventually land on the soundtrack for Cyberpunk 2077. Now Green Day, well, they have a Beat Saber music pack, so take that as you will. Fisa Mac is in the house! Ah, uh, Reggie. Although he may no longer be the president of Nintendo, no gaming award would feel complete without Reggie. And there was no better person to give this next award than him. He had some really profound words to say. Like you, I've witnessed the growth of our favorite form of entertainment. And now video games are bigger than the movie industry. Bigger than music. Bigger than television. I think this is the most important award of the night because I believe indie developers are the most important creators in this industry. Because every nominee this year and every year at one time was an indie developer. In the same sense that everyone was once a kid sketching a superhero in the middle of class or lying in bed at night thinking of worlds and challenges that no one had ever dreamed of before. For my friend Shigeru Miyamoto, 
Those ideas began around the woods in, near his house in Kyoto. And for my dear departed friend, Satoru Iwata, those ideas led him to invent his first video game on a portable calculator while he was still in high school. They both became fixtures in the history of video games, but first, they were dreamers, and they began with their imagination. So like everyone else, at the start, they were true indie developers. If you want to see the incubator where future game greatness is evolving, it resides right here in this indie category, recognizing brand new independent studios who released their first game this year. Let's take a look. That was actually one of the best speeches that I have personally witnessed in gaming history, so I had to include most of it in here. Reggie might be retired from the industry, but that man will forever remain a national gaming treasure. There's one last game announcement to share with you tonight. Allow me to present the world premiere of our latest expansion to the Fast and Furious saga. So this was it. The last world premiere of the Game Awards. It honestly felt like a lukewarm finish, especially compared to some of the other announcements that night. I mean, look, I get that the Fast and Furious franchise is enormous, but dude, look at this thing. It looks like a PS2 game. I think I know someone who can help. However, when you really think about it, it makes sense. Michelle Rodriguez, who is presenting the trailer, is the co-star to Vin Diesel in the Fast and Furious franchise. Now, it's safe to say that Fast and Furious is probably the biggest thing with the most amount of money at the Game Awards. And then you consider the fact that Vin Diesel shows up to present the award for Game of the Year alongside Michelle Rodriguez. And then you realize that Vin Diesel is probably the biggest star in the building that night. So you add all that up and then it just really makes sense that this was the final announcement that night. When in doubt, do what I do. I've seen what you do. That's why I'm kind of terrified. Here to pay tribute to all of the nominees for Game of the Year. And once, once again, again, the Game Awards, the Game Awards Orchestra, Orchestra was the MVP of the show. Here they performed a medley of the musical themes from the games that were nominated for Game of the Year that night. Unfortunately, it was not Super Smash Bros. that won that night. However, the game that did win was very much deserving. The Game of the Year award goes to... Sekiro. While Sekiro flew under the radar for many, the game received universal acclaim from critics and it was commonly compared to the Soul series. Its high level difficulty was the focus of many criticism, however most of the praise was directed towards its gameplay and setting. 
congratulations from software miyazaki son game of the year for Sekiro. all right guys well that's going to do it for the game awards 2019 thank you so much for joining us we'll see you again next december to keep celebrating games have a great night thank you very much good night everybody. Out of the game awards. Oh, look, it's D1 and Boyd. So it looks like uh, the crew just met up and we're about to go get some Japanese food. I'm just gonna get something to eat and then head home because I do have uh, another day tomorrow and I'm going to Rock Hampton concert in the evening. So I gotta get some bricks, another but I also gotta get fed. So I'll catch you guys in the next vlog. Peace out. Your N word counter is at 10. It's <laughs> to the room. Hey, they got 11. <laughs> Sad to say there was no Sora for Smash announcement, but it was a fun show. Had a good time, and I'd do it again. Uh, you know, there was no Smash DLC announcement, period, so, you know, Sora for Smash Dream is still living. This is the VIP, like, tomato soup, grilled cheese. Let's go. I have brie cheese. What? I have brie no cheese. Way. I got three. Wait. I don't know who this is. This is an opener. We're chilling in the VIP lounge.